what I'm going to do in this video is just go over the basics of what you should be doing for lab one. Um, remember you need to go into Blackboard, look under the labs uh, icon, click on that and you'll see lab one. And what we're going to be doing in lab one, and this is actually real information about a real place, is you're going to look at uh, Gorongosa National Park in Mozambique in, in Africa. The goal of this is just to work on your observation skills. Observing things is the first step in the scientific process. You have to observe in order to ask questions. So what you'll do is you'll just scroll down, you'll download this document. So you want to download this document into Word and you will type your answers into this document and then submit them um, once you've saved all your answers. So do type your answers on this sheet. Um, right here is a video I want you to watch. It talks about the research that's going on in Gorongosa. It focuses on lions. Uh, this exercise will focus on all the animals in the area. But I just want you to read this and then summarize your video. Um, just a piece of advice, most people when they do the first couple labs for this class tend not to write enough. So I want you to show me that you've watched a video and that you've gone through the thinking process. So if you're not sure, add a little bit more. This should only take one paragraph, but a paragraph is not just two sentences. So give me some detail to show me that you did watch the video. As you scroll down, um, what you're going to be doing is looking at pictures that these uh, cameras on the trails um, look at. So this is going to be a pra not a practice, but an idea of what you're supposed to do. So you're going to look at this picture and you're going to write down any observations you have. Again, the big mistake is not putting enough detail. I want to know what's going on in here, what you see, what you notice. I want you also to notice these areas. All right, and talk about observations you've made by looking at this picture. So what happens with these trail cams, just so you know, is they're set up and then when something moves in front of them, they take a picture. And they're located all over the park and then scientists collect these pictures and then do the same thing that you're going to do. Um, if you hear any noise in the background, that's usually my cats, which they're not as big as these cats, but um, they make a lot of noise. So if you hear that, I apologize. So make any observations. And again, more detail. Um, if you write two or three things, that's not going to be enough. I'm looking for that you're looking throughout the picture and you are writing down everything that you see. Then what you're going to do is you're going to write down some questions that you have. So what scientists do, what people do, which just seems to be a natural part of who we are, is you're going to from that picture, you're going to ask questions. So what, why, how? Uh, that will be the next step. So I'll be looking for questions there. Write down some questions. Again, that is more than one. So I would look in the three to five uh, range for questions. Then you're going to look at more detailed observations. You're going to look at 10 day photos, taken 10 photos taken during the day, and 10 photos taken at night. Um, if you go back to the folder for lab one, you'll see a document that says day pictures and night pictures. You open them. You don't need to print them out. You can just download them or look at them directly off Blackboard, but you need to be looking at all of them in comparison to each other and make observations about these day uh, photos individually as well as a group. More so as a group, so what are you noticing? Uh, do some counting of species and those kind of things. Do the same thing for the night pictures. And then you're going to, in the last section here, compare them. What are similarities? What are differences? What are you seeing in those pictures comparing day and night? Okay, comparing day and night. Don't tell me it's dark at night and light during the day. I already know that one. So you're going to compare the two based on details. Then you're going to do the same thing, but we're going to be looking at different seasons. So you're going to get 10 photos of the dry season, 10 photos of the wet season. Again, what do you see? What are your observations for the dry? What are your observations for the wet? And then you're going to compare the two. Again, you don't need to download these pictures. Just open the files within Blackboard. Look at them. Scroll back and forth so you're looking at all pictures for each type or part of the year. Okay, so then you're going to do something after you compare those. You're going to collect data on the whole thing. So you're going to look at all 40 pictures, and you might, might write the number of different species, and you'll notice on the slides, or on the pictures, I should say, it tells you the name of the animal or animals that are found um, in that picture. So you're going to count the number of different species that you've seen, 
and the number of each species. So you just need to make a tally. So the number of species total that you've seen in those 40 uh, pictures and then a list of each species with the number of each. Again, if you see two pictures that have the same species but they look like they're the same, you still count them as two individuals. Okay, you still count them as two individuals. So then based on this data you've collected, you've compared day to night, you've compared wet and dry season, you've asked questions, you've come up with the number of species, you're going to develop specific questions dealing with all these observations that you've made. Okay, so how, why, what, specific questions, they need to be very specific, something that you could design a study off of. Okay, so it can't be what is the difference between day and night. We know that, okay, you've collected that. What specifically do you want to know based on the questions or based on the observations that you have made? And then part four, you just read this, and this will lead you into um, just doing the scientific method. You'll also notice under lab information, and I'm going to go, there's a, you probably already watched that video. Um, I'm going to do an example of what a lab write up is going to look like. And it's going to be based on this information. So you'll see that example. You're not going to do a lab write-up for this lab, but you will for the next lab. But I'm going to use this one as an example of what a lab write-up should look like. So once you've typed in all your answers, then you're going to save this document to your Word or to your computer, and then you're going to submit it under the specific assignment. So you type, you download this document, you type your answers on this document, you save it, and then you submit it. All right, so go ahead and get this first lab done, and I will be back with you in another lab explanation video.